Murray Payne is friendly, easy to talk to, involved in all manners of art, watercolors, pen and ink, totem poles, stone and concrete work, and he enjoys the challenge of creating humorous short stories based on his careers as a master plumber and over 30 volunteer years as a scout leader. As a member of the Baysville Writers Group since 2014, he's busy writing both fiction and nonfiction stories that always include a large dash of his unique sense of humor. Murray's tongue-in-cheek tales may be titillating, belly laugh producing, or reveal his more sensitive and insightful side. Today, he will be reading his tale, A Bear's Tooth. You asked me to tell you a story, and I will. It concerns a bear's tooth and how I came by it. It all started many years ago when I was a leader in scouting and was asked if I would be interested in attending a challenge course for adult leaders in a survival course located in the U.S. of A. at the Bear Paw Mountains in the state of Utah. Yes, my was my reply, and arrangements were made to send me along with a few of our adult leaders from Canada. It would require that we'd be away from home for at least seven days and nights. There would be six of us going. Upon arrival, we were given quarters for sleeping. That night, after supper, a lecture was given about the course with any and all questions answered. We then retired to our rooms for a good night's sleep. It had been a busy day. The next day, after breakfast, we were given all the equipment we would require, and a small wall mat would show us the route we would be taking to climb the mountain, guided by a qualified guide as well as a climbing expert. The first day was possibly the best, as well as the easiest, as we were all ready and eager to go as we reached the first evening camp site Tents were provided for our use and we all worked together as a team. We would gather wood for a fire and food. And after supper, we made, we talk about the day as well as our progress. Then in bedtime and morning comes quickly. Second day is to be a bright day. We're all up and ready. The tents are down and food is prepared and eaten. We start up the mountain trail for our next learning experience till we reach our next campsite. Some distance ahead of us, of course, we repeat the tents up and the food cooking again, along with a lecture of our progress as well as sights and sounds to be prepared for during the night. It has been a troubling day climbing and an early bed comes easy. It's higher and harder on our third day. The mountain trails are tougher and the climbing slower as our muscles reject our efforts, but it all comes together as before. Some good healthy food we locate from the flower and fauna along with the food we carry. A nice camp type fire before bed and sleep. It's cooler this day with a little dew on the site. After breakfast, a lecture about things we should keep our eyes open for as we move onwards and ever upwards again till day's end and rest. Our muscles are being well exercised more than ever before and a few camps set in, uh, in occasionally, but we are all responding now as a team. After breakfast, we start the climbing again the leaders pointing out things we should be aware of, like how sparse is wood we need for cooking, as well as poisonous plants and snakes. We soldier on, though, and make it through the fifth day and the rest. It's the sixth day, and it's a cold morning, and with a warm fire and hot food, we are all very tired from the climbing and need a rest. We are closer to the top of the mountain now, and within its reach. At lunchtime, the sun comes out and we are warmed up. Someone suggests that we take a quick run up to the top of the mountain to say that we 
made it and saw the other side. Foolishly in the morning, in the warmth of the day, we leave our jackets behind. As we climb to see the top of the mountain, the last trail is steeper and takes us longer to achieve the top. And although it is beautiful, a dark cloud tells us snow is approaching. We must respond to our campsite. And as we all rush to start down the thin trail, in our haste, I fall behind. The snow is upon us and, I'll, and I lose sight of my comrades. But alas, too late, I'm alone and must proceed slowly lest I fall. I'm feeling the cold more severely now and seek shelter in a cluster of pine and cedar trees to get my bearings as I shiver there. I spot steam vapors issuing from the side of a hillock. I know from experience that a bear sleeps within. I make a decision, try to enter the bear's den or freeze to death outside. I choose the bear knowing it will be in a deep sleep. As I reach the opening and squirm into the opening, I detect a disgusting odor, but it is warmer as I slither inside. After adjusting my eyes to the lack of real light, I locate the outline of a large black bear snoring, as it seems to me. I move closer, afraid I might wake it, but it is a deep sleep. The odor is coming from his half-open mouth. An infected tooth is causing the odor as it draws its pant paw over it. As nervous as I am, I slide closer to the bear and the smell. I need to brace or steady myself, preparing to lay alongside the bear to see if I might assist the bear in removing the infected and loose tooth. Without waking it, and voila, the tooth is freed, as well as the stress, and we both succumb to a tenably night's sleep. In the morning, I make my retreat while still holding the bear's tooth, and once outside, I hear the sound of voices calling my name. Once re reunited, I was questioned about my survival in the storm. After explaining what had happened, they all had a good laugh and would not believe a word I had told him till I held up the bear's tooth in my hand, saying, well, I've got the tooth, don't I? They say that all's well that ends well, and a good story to tell around the campfire. Thank you.